Hello, my darling critters. A lot happened this episode, but none of it was combat. We had a resolution to the quest to save Laudna and said goodbye to the Bells Hills meets Fox Machina Inception event. And even though there wasn't any combat, I was pretty happy with this episode. Who am I? I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. <laughs> episode 38 opened by wrapping up the quest to save Laudna. As expected, the party went through great lengths to resurrect Laudna, but unexpected, at least for me, because I forgot how Matt does resurrections, which are based on dice rolls, and there's a chance the resurrection would fail. We were all on pins and needles after two unsuccessful rolls by Bell's Hells, which modified the die roll that Laudna needed to make for the resurrection. As Pike closes her eyes, finishes her prayer, and opens them once more, that bright, pale, silver light once again is now glowing out of her own eyes. As she speaks, her voice echoes, like numerous versions of her own voice are projecting and supporting what she says. As she shouts out into the space between you all, she says, Laudna, wherever you are, come back to us. Come back to your family. And without breaking eye contact with whatever distant space she's focused on, she reaches a hand out to whoever will take it. Please. May I? Yeah. Laudna. I know I don't know you any better than the rest of the gang, but I know your history. You deserve to be more than a footnote in Delilah's story. Okay. So in that regard, I'll allow you to make either a persuasion check or nature, using the poppies as a, an anchor. Your choice. Nature. This is basically a straight roll. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. okay. Threshold was 10. Uh -huh. So that is one success for the ritual, which lowers the DC by three okay. of the resurrection. Uh, I, uh, with my other hand uh, gripping my, my, that coin, uh, mm -hmm. I will take her hand and I'll just whisper to her, um, uh, Laudna, you, you might not have been, you know, perfect, but you loved and you loved Pike said that you might not want to come back, so I'm afraid we can't let you do that. So I'm going to cast Compulsion on her and compel her to come back, if possible. Okay. Yeah. I got the I'll fucking fuck her up. <laughs> Unfortunately, the attempt to push forth a spell into another ritual, to a soul that currently is beyond any boundary you've attempted to reach past, you feel the magical energies just sort of scatter like they hit nothing, like a, like a breath into the wind. I'm just gonna stand behind her head and Pressure your forehead and say, um, you know you saved my life, right? If you hadn't come into town when you did, I don't know how long I would have lasted. Oh. 
these last few years have been, they've been everything. And through it all, through all the laughter and all the hardships, she was with you. She was choking you. If you come back, I don't know how you're gonna feel. I don't know if you'll feel free or if you'll feel empty. But I want you to know whatever Whatever hole she's leaving, I'll be there to help fill it, all right? I'll be there for you. I'm not gonna tell you to come back. I'm not gonna try to compel you to come back because that choice, Laudna, is yours now. No one gets to control you anymore. All right. Just know that I love you. And I'm here. And I'm gonna take Pate and I'm gonna put him on her chest. Make a persuasion check for me. Do you wanna guide her? Sure, I'll allow it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> nope. Do you have a boat or no? I used them both. Okay. Did you have the D4 for? Uh... I did. Okay. What's it's, the total? Um, it's a seven. It's a seven? Okay. No advantage on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's challenging, given the fact that this is a soul that is still bound to shadow. Shadow that now is vengeful, as diminished as it may be, and is still in some ways holding your voices back from finding the ears that needs to hear them. But with that final call, he watches Pike's hair begins to drift upward past her shoulders, and kind of undulating, floating in the air. She begins to carry herself up off the ground and begin to lift an inch, two inches, three inches off the ground, legs still folded in front of her. And you watch as all the sigils <laughs> light up from underneath. Laudna's dark hair, as it kind of hangs off her shoulders, begins to lift up as well. And as Pike leans forward and places her hand once more on her chest, all the glyphs at once, shush, alight, and then go dark as they both drift back to the ground. Uh, cannot find my usual resurrection dice. I thought it was here. That silver dude, right? Yeah, but shit, that's okay. I'll use this one. Use the. Of black, purple, almost laudanum color. It seems fitting. It yeah. seems fitting. Okay. We're going to take a picture of that. I'm oh, no. so stressed. I got a nose bleed. Oh, oh no. my god. Oh, no. How appropriate. Okay. <laughs> Moment passes. In that stillness, you hear Pike exhale and under her breath say once more, come on, come on. Exalia leans forward. Pike did it. I don't. She 
She leans forward and places her hand over the front of her mouth. Who knows? Is she a real shallow breather? Oh, she, she doesn't breathe at all. Most of the time. She licks her hand and slaps the side of Laudna's face, of which immediately Laudna sits up, jolted awake from the pain. Oh. Laudna, if you come back to the table, oh! please. What did you roll? 16. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what was the DC after two failed? Oh man, 15? Uh, well, it was 12 initially. Holy and then it went down to nine, and then it went to ten to eleven. Oh so my it, god, dude, that was so <laughs> gnarly. What did you roll? What did you 16. roll? Sixteen. What did oh, you need? Shit. A fifteen. Uh, eleven. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was his first one. Nice. <sighs> time to rise. You know, like a, so big. Time to rise oh like god. a dark phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my fan? Yep. Holy it's kind of hard to read yeah. from that angle. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 never fuck again. Oh my god! I don't want to bleed on you, I got a nose bleed from the stress. Hey, we're feeling it. Oh you don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Oh my god. Here, here, where's the thing? Those Mickey Mouse hands are messing me up, dude. They're messing me up. Oh, oh, oh boy, touch me! Lord, oh. you're back! <laughs> But oh, happy days. The resurrection was successful and Laudna is back. Now I am really happy about it because I've made no secret that Laudna is my favorite character in this campaign, but she separated from Delilah. Thus ends a major subplot with Laudna dealing with the Delilah possession. At least, I think that it ends. What do you think? Is Delilah truly gone? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my Chanel. I will say that we never did find out what happened with the Gnarl Rock and Delilah. So, Maybe the door is open. The big question was, without Delilah, is Laudna still undead? And there were a few attempts by the party to discern if there was anything different, but no. I know she's walking and I know she's talking, but does she look the same as before? Same pallor, complexion, any sort of indications of, I don't know, rouge? Anywhere. Make a perception check. And you make one for 22. 22. Don't worry, coming in hot with a six. <laughs> well, we I <laughs> roll it over here. Well, actually, I have advantage on Fey Fiends and Undead. I don't know if. Why Technically, she counts as an undead. Come on, bitch, roll it with the 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, okay. aside from the. Creep it up there. <laughs> Aside from the the somewhat like shredded elements of her dress that are still remnants of where the blades struck her during the fight with Oban, Ladna looks pretty much the same. If I could say a little oddly more pale or exhausted, given the uh, the lingering remnants of the raised dead spell, but nothing nothing beyond that. Ladna is still her old undead self, which was highlighted when she did a find familiar to bring Pate to life. I pull Pate out and take the sinewy strings and kind of collapse them down on itself on top of him. Pull him apart and cast Find Familiar. Oh, yes. What? And just like releasing a dove, just 
it falls down. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Can I? <sighs> Can it fly? So you you watch as the lifeless, headless body of a rat affixed to a skull <laughs> tumbles into the air. The string is kind of stretching and breaking, and it arcs downward before the back tears open in what looks to be a pair of awful looking tattered wings that emerge from the back. Like his rib cage is now yeah, his like wings. Oh, oh my god, I love that. Yeah. The back. Orphan maker. As it flies <laughs> up, uh, seemingly held aloft by some unseen necromantic powers. As it kind of just hangs there limply, it's the wings kind of. <laughs> you've not, not seen this sort of puppeteering before. The head kind of <laughs> looks up towards the rescue before it goes. Oh, hello! Oh! It's so nice to meet all of you! Oh, uh, oh, he's real! Right. You can hear him too! You can, you can hear him! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, wow, that's really creepy. Huh. I'm going to go. <laughs> Bye! Okay, Pate will definitely be this season's comedy relief, as if we needed any more comedy relief, but you can tell that Matt is going to have a field day playing Pate. But then we leave Whitestone and say goodbye to Vox Machina. Now, I know not all the viewers were happy to see Vox Machina in this inception with Bell's Hells, preferring not to see Matt playing all the Vax Machina roles, rather preferring the Vox Machina characters to be only played by the original cast. And logically, when Vox Machina was told about the Rudeus conspiracy, wouldn't that be something that those high-level characters would get directly involved in? But I personally thought it was fine. Besides, I think it was more of a small love letter to the fans of Vox Machina, and Vox Machina, I am sure, is not supposed to play any significant role in the Bell's Hells campaign. Now, on the eve, before the party returns to Drusar, we are tossed back into the thick of the Rudia storyline with Imogen having another of her dreams. But this time she is accompanied by FCG. The dream is a little bit different this time. It doesn't seem to be as prominent, the big red storm coming at Imogen, and it gets very cold. And I was wondering if Imogen and FCG were in the eye of the storm. And I kind of thought so, but I wasn't sure. But the big moment was Imogen seeing who she thought was Lord Eshteros, which is how she sees people who die, like when she saw Bertrand Bell. Glancing about, you see ahead of you, the opposite direction of the house, a shadowed shape that just moves away and vanishes into the dust away from you. She might be here. Odah? Yeah. Uh, I don't. We can't cast spells in here, right? I don't know. I never tried. Stay close. I'm going to move towards it. You move towards it. You step closer and closer and pick up pace to try and catch up with this shape that is moving. Briskly, but not running. You get closer and you can see it's a broader shape. Not the thin, familiar feminine warrior body that you faced off with in Vassarus not but a few days ago. This is more of a warrior's form of a, a masculine outline. <gasps> Does it look familiar? 
It's hard to make out the specifics in the intensity of this storm. But you see the walking figure stop, kind of glance over its shoulder in your direction for just a moment, and then it's gone. Did I recognize a face? You didn't get to look at the face. Did it feel similar to when Bertrand walked away from me? And the twins? It had some similarities to it. I think somebody just died. What? I think somebody passed on, I think. And you saw them. Didn't you? But I mean, you knew, you know, you can see people pass on? I saw Bertrand here. I saw him that night. He looked like a warrior, someone big. Oh God, I hope it's not Estral's. Once the party gets back to Drusar, of course, they immediately investigate Lord Eshros to see if Imogen's vision was correct. Chetney and Pate sneak into his home where all the traps have been set off. We then find Lord Eshros's cold, lifeless body. And there's also a last will and testament, leaving Bell's Hills the flying ship. Oh, and if you're wondering if Lord Estros can be just resurrected, we just did it to Laudna. No, because he was poisoned like Orem's husband was, with the type of poison that prevents any sort of resurrection. So, door closed on that. And yes, we know it was Odathon Thal, are more likely Odathon Thal's echoes, which are those shadowy mirror images that she can send out of herself. Even though a lot happened during this episode, it kind of felt to me like a resting episode. We just had a bunch of episodes where there was a lot of action and drama, and it felt like the party and the viewers needed a rest. And we certainly had a lot leading up to this episode, so I do think we needed a break. And yes, I know we had the resolution of Ladna and we found out about Eshteros, but the party was never in any great real danger. And at least for me, it felt more like the calm before the storm rather than an actual storm. So where do we go from here? This is sort of a graduation from low level to mid level, I think. Low level Bell's Hells needed a patron to help them along, but now that they're seventh level, and I assume pretty close to eighth level, they can pretty much stand on their own. So I am sorry to see Eshteros go. I really did like that character. But I can't help wanting to see how Bell's Hells is going to operate without any sort of safety net. I am also very interested in that ship. I think that they're going to go into Spelljammer territory and fly up to Rudius, and now they have a ship. It just needs a little bit of a retrofit so they can go into space. Do you think that's where we're being led? I cannot wait until next episode where we once again will focus on Rudius and how they will deal with Odahan Thal. And as usual, I'll be there. Until we meet again, may all the books you read and campaigns you play be blessed.